uh, last time we were looking at members of a class right? okay. and defining our class for the purpose of creating a new data type and we are creating a class called rectangle okay. and yes we have put some members into the class definition right? so defining a class means okay class you give a class name and you have the body and in body there are various kinds of members which you have to put okay right yeah so what are the members which go in a class definition yeah. we have variables okay. we call them as so one type of variable is a instance variable right so yeah what is typical about the instance variable It comes into existence when a object is created. When only when an object is there, the instance variables will exist. For every object, there is a separate copy. Okay, every object is has its own copy of the instance variables. Right? Okay, fine. Then what was the next thing we saw? For example, in case of the rectangle class, yeah, what were the instance variables we had? Length. Length and width. They were the instance variables, right? Okay. Fine. What's the next kind of member which we have seen? Methods, right? So methods are? Yeah. Methods are? What's the purpose of a method? They define interaction, right? Interaction with the object. Okay, if there is an object, fine. Right? With the object, what is your interaction, right? What operations can be performed on an object of the given class? Okay, fine. Methods, yes. What do they have? They take parameters, fine, right? which is about input given to it, it will have its own processing and that's in the within the body of the method and then may or may not return a value, right, okay. So when you define a method, you have to decide whether it's going to return a value or not. You have to decide what, mem what values it would take as input, what inputs are required and what will it be returning. So when, uh, what, uh, what type of what is the data type, right? Basically, we talk about types. So it says, okay, you got first parameter, you got second parameter, you can give names to those parameters. Right? And then you also define the return type, okay? And then within the body of the method, you write the, oh, what is the processing with the inputs you are going to do, right? And wherever required, yes, you can use a return statement to come out of the method. Right? So, Fine, clear? Okay, fine. What else? Methods was the second kind of a member, yeah? What was the third thing? Constructors. So, what are constructors? It's kind of a method, special method. Fine. Okay, and what is what is the speciality about this method? It is called when you create the <coughs> object. And as soon as you create the object, only then you can call. You can't call on an object later. It's not to be called later. Right? The purpose is initialization. Right? So you can take parameters in this, take some inputs and decide to set up the initial value for the instance variables, right? Instance variables are there, fine, by default, what will be the values for the instance variables? Instance variables, depends on the type of the variable, okay? If the variable is numeric type, then 
zero. If the variable is a boolean type, then false. And if the variable is a reference type, then null. Okay. Hence, standard default initial values for them. Okay. So, friends, so that was about the so constructors are nothing but so the default is what would be given to the instance variables when you allocate, right? And then in immediately on allocation, fine. When you create, how do we create object by using the keyword new, followed by name of the class, and there we have the option of specifying inputs. Fine for the constructor. Okay, we can specify inputs, right? So what kind of inputs? Okay, so we can use those input maybe to just set up the values for the instance variables, right? So we normally do assignment there. That's a normal thing. Okay. Okay. So initial part is that, right? Yeah. So constructors, right? Methods also you can overload method. Overloading of method is method with the same name and find different kinds of input parameters okay different sets of input parameters okay so in rectangle class also we have done that method overloading right we had a method called set dimensions we overloaded okay so that we can either give both the dimensions or we may just give the value of the side so single integer may also be specified Okay, we have kept it of type int, right? Length and width. Okay, fine. Same way, constructors can also be overloaded, right? That's what we say. Okay, and then what about the constructor? Within the constructor, when we overload a constructor, okay, from an overloaded constructor, you may invoke any other constructor, fine, by using the keyword. this right and we can use the keyword this and specify the parameters to invoke another constructor from within a constructor but whenever we use this it has to be the first statement in the constructor right okay okay so this was seen and then yeah still we had seen a few more another kind of member so so and we have seen instance variables, methods, constructors. What else? And initially someone said just variables. I said, okay, we have one kind of variable. It is an instance variable. Another kind of variable, which is member of a class. Yeah. What is the other type of variable? Local would be within the method. We are talking of within a class itself, right? Within the body of the class. Yeah? Class. class variables, right? We are the class variables. We use the keyword static. Fine. To declare a class variable, we use the keyword static. Okay. Fine. So uh, in our case, what we did, yeah, what is the difference between the class variable and the instance variable? When does an instance variable come into existence? When the object is created. And you have to say new. When someone says new, oh, then the object will be created. That time instance variables is allocated. Right? Okay. What about the class variables? When are they allocated? When they come into existence? They come into existence when the class is loaded. Okay. When we understand there is something called loading of a class. And before a class can be used, right? See, someone has defined a class. So what has happened? You have compiled it. You have got a class file. Okay. Fine. The class file is nothing but a <coughs> binary code for the whatever you have written in Java. Fine. That gets converted into byte code. Okay, so that's what the class file is. Fine. Okay, 
So the JVM would understand that, right? So yeah. So when you start a Java application, okay, it would enter the main method, right? So once it starts the execution of the main method, okay, you want to use the rectangle class somewhere. You may declare a variable. When you declare a variable, it doesn't realize that there is something to be done with this class. It won't load the class up to that point. Rectangle dot class would not be loaded. As soon as you use some other some member of a class, yeah? for example, you may be calling a static method. You may be using some static member. You may be calling the constructor. I mean anything. So any activity done with the class definition, other than just declaring a variable. Okay, declaring variable is okay. And doesn't need any kind of checking whether uh, about the correctness of what you are doing. Okay, you can because it's a type and you have a variable being declared, so it's fine. Okay, so any first usage of the class definition and what would it do? That class file needs to be loaded into memory and it creates a some kind of an object in which the class definition will be loaded. Fine. It is at this place that the okay, I think you know, last time we were making some kind of a here I think this was the same. Okay. So last time I think looking at this only. Okay. Fine. We uh, we understand that initially the first usage of the rectangle class would load the rectangle class definition. Okay. So let me put this here as okay. okay. So this is your object for class definition. Okay. Some object which is having later we we'll realize what kind of object it is and we'll come to that uh, object for class definition. So if it has to, you want to use, in your any application, it wants to use the rectangle class, fine. First, the definition will have to be loaded, fine. And it's here that the space for class variable is allocated. So when the class is loaded, that's the time when the static variable or the class variable is allocated. So the count is going to be here. Okay, fine. We allocated the instance variable called, uh, not uh, instance, but the class variable called count. And we have def declared that. Okay, want to see the definition of the rectangle? Or you remember that? In last time, okay. And this is what was done last time. Yeah, we had the instance variable, fine length and width with the instance variable. Oh, yeah, while discussing about the difference between static and non static, what is the difference? Static does not require object, fine, not dependent on object. Object may or may not exist. <coughs> and you don't work with object when talking about static. Okay. Fine. Okay. So in the entire class definition, you can look at it this way. In the entire class definition, where you have not used static, that's a place where you can use the keyword this. This is available throughout the class definition except for the static part. Okay. Right? So everything what you write in a class definition is only talking about object. 
if there is object of the class oh it will have a length if there is object of a class it will have a width fine entire thing is an assumption that there is a object of a class if there is an object of a class you can call the length method if there is an object of a class you may call the area method fine but that requires always some object okay but as soon as we use the word static not related to the object of that class nothing to do with the object okay don't worry about objects right so first class loading would happen and then class variables are allocated at that point of time okay and then what's the next thing you may be probably creating some object okay so if you are creating object yes the allocation for the object would take place okay so yes you are creating an object and there would be the length and the width that will get allocated So we have the length and width and that is an object of the rectangle, right? This is nothing but the fine. Earlier what we have is the object of fine. Earlier what we have is the object of a class definition of rectangle not the object of rectangle fine here what we have here right the place where we have got the count that's an object with a class definition only one you load the rectangle class once whether object of rectangle may or may not have been created before the object of rectangle can be created this definition is loaded okay so this object creation happens first fine allocation of your class variable the static variable is happening here all class variables will be in this object okay they would have a default initial value according to their types and we know according to the type what is the initial value okay fine and then anything any activity which you are doing with the object oh, first will be maybe object creation or sometimes you know along with this class variable we also look at class methods the method which you declare as static oh we had the public static void main that method was a static method and it was working without creating the object of hello world and we created hello world and said okay let's have an object of hello world right so uh, no we didn't say oh i want to create object we never used new hello okay fine clear on this okay. and so first will be creation of this okay let me tell you what the kind of object this is fine uh, uh, I, you know earlier i have just mentioned one thing that uh, super type for all reference type is a class called object and we have a class called object just like we have a class called object there is another class also which is available to us right which is for holding this kind of a class definition any type definition is <coughs> in java any data type right any type definition oh that is available in an object of the type class okay so we have this is actually the name of a class just like oh if there is a rectangle what does an object of rectangle have length and length. width so if there is an object of class what will it have no it will say oh this is a class definition which has got two instance variables whose name is length and width it's not the length and width which is here it says there are two instance variables 
then it will say, oh, there are so many methods, which are the methods? The entire definition is an you know, object of the type. <coughs> What's the type of the object? Class. So if you have an object, it has a type. Okay. When clear, if there is an object, there is a objects are of some type. Objects are going to be of some class or it may be an array. Okay, class type or it may be a array type. Okay, now, see, uh, what's the purpose of a constructor? Purpose of the constructor? See, when a constructor is called, what's happening? Object creation is happening. So, what's the purpose of the constructor? It has to initialize. Initialize. Which kind of variables will be initialized? Instance variables. Instance variables are coming into existence at that point of time. And therefore, their initialization needs to happen. And that's a place. So, we have this constructor. Mainly, the purpose is, oh, we are allocating these instance variables. Let us give us. So, you would like to set up the initial values for them. Otherwise, we have the defaults, right? Okay. That you can do in the constructor. That is the whole idea of a constructor. And just like for constructor, their initialize, initialization for the instance variables happens in a constructor. We may be interested in initial value for our class variables. And we will be interested in initial value for the class variables. Right? Oh, constructor is only when the object is created. Class variable coming into existence when the class is loaded. Right? They come into existence when the class is loaded. So, when the class is loaded, fine, we would like to do initialization of the class variable. Right? Something similar to what constructor is for the instance variables. Similarly, we would like to have some place where we can do the initialization of a class variable. And that's where we have what we call as a static block. Right? Or also known as a class initializer block. Okay. Let me put it here in the text. Okay. So, how we can write that here? See, uh, I am doing something which is redundant, but the idea here is to let you know the purpose of the. So, we will have in our class definition, right, we have created all this. Okay, <coughs> fine, I am putting it right here itself. And you can, for example, We will have a block, but we declare this to be a static block. Okay, fine. And this is known as the class initializer block. Okay, the purpose set up the initial values for the class variable. Here we have a class variable called count. Anyway, by default, it would have been zero, but I am still doing it explicitly. Okay. Okay. It's just to remind us. Oh, the purpose here is to the purpose of a class uh, class initializer block, right? Created by using the keyword static and just opening a block. No name. No. It's not a method like that. Okay. So the first thing which happens when when a class is loaded is execution of this. Right. Yeah, class loading has to take place first, and that's where the class initializer block will execute. 
right? So class loading is happening. When the class loading is happening, static variables, they get their space, right? The object of the class class that's getting created and corresponding to the class definition. Okay. Fine. And then a location has taken place. They would have their initial values, default initial values. You want to set up some different values. Maybe you might have a mechanism where you need to load from a file something, read from a file and then do the initialization. Any kind of thing may be there. So all that can be put in your class initializer block. Okay, e executed as soon as the class is loaded. When the class is loaded, your class variables are allocated. That's what we know. So the purpose here will be set up the values for the class variables. <coughs> Fine. Yeah. For us here, yes. In case of our rectangle class, there's there's only one class variable, and the default value what it has is actually good for us. We may not have put a class initializer block, then also it would have been fine. Okay, fine. So I am doing something redundant, but just it's a reminder that yes, the purpose here is to set up the value for the class or the static variable, as you may like to call it. Okay, fine. So members of a class definition, and one more member, right? Okay, fine. We have the instance variables, methods, constructors class variables, class methods, and now a class initializer block. Okay. Now, uh, oh, what we want to do here, uh, let's go to the constructor here. Basically, it's not a, uh, the next thing which we are going to look at here, as a, though we call it as a member of a class. Now, you know, one thing here, we have put count plus plus in the First constructor, right? Constructor with two parameters is count plus plus. Right? Constructor with one parameter doesn't say count plus plus. Right? But it is invoking the other constructor. Right? It is invoking the other constructor. So, how are these both of them going to be used? And this will be used when someone uses, okay, if someone says new right, and gives two integers, right, okay, and for example, someone says 7, 5, okay, 7, 6 maybe, yeah, okay, so this is how this one is used and how is this one going to be used when someone says new rectangle okay just says single value right so use these right from a main yeah that's the kind of code you would be writing i put it in the main okay that's how the thing is used so when someone creates an object with only one parameter or someone creates an object with two parameters count has to increment by one because only one object has been created okay single object creation so count should be increased by one. We can't be putting a count plus plus over here. Right? The reason we are using this here, invoking the other constructor. Right? Maybe tomorrow someone comes and some uh, new developer comes, and maybe he is not comfortable by for using this, and he just says, "Okay, let's use set dimensions. Let's call the set dimensions. It anyway does the same thing." initialization of my instance variables will take place and then he forgets about saying count plus plus or maybe some other constructors are added into this class definition okay and they don't call the count I find the count the logic will be such that the count increment may not happen the reason is you didn't call this and you didn't write the count plus plus so what is count plus plus? We want this to happen whenever any object is created, independent of whether you are using two parameters, one parameter, or tomorrow someone has some other kind of parameters. 
whatever way you create an object and I want this to happen. If an object is created using any of the constructors, right? Something common for all constructors, okay? That can be done by using what we call as an initializer block, okay? So a class definition may even have a initializer block. So what we may do here is we may pick this up from here and put it in a initializer block. I'll put it here, right here itself. So, and so your class definition may have a initializer block. Okay. Fine. So we have shifted the count plus plus t to the initializer. Now, when we do this count plus plus, when we create an initializer block, it's nothing but it is something which is part of the constructor. Fine. It's part of every constructor. It's part of every constructor which is not using this. Okay. Yeah. The first thing in the constructor, what uh, see when this gets compiled okay that initializer block is not a separate thing altogether it's not a separate thing it doesn't have its own separate existence right? a constructor will be defined for every class definition okay fine a constructor is always there for every class definition so yes it will be defining constructors according to what you have put in this definition even if you don't put anything in such definitions, still a no argument constructor would then be called. It will be creating a no argument constructor by default. Right? So in that constructor, uh, this initializer block would anyway go. And so this is part of the constructor. And so what you put in the initializer block is nothing but you are putting it in a Think that this is being put for all constructors. So it, during compilation, what it has is only constructors. The bytecode doesn't have a separate existence for the initialized block. It has existence of constructors. Okay, fine. Uh, there's something more which gets added to the constructor. And we'll see how to find out yeah, that this is how it's happening, right? We'll also put some code so that we can find out, yes, that this is how it's happening. And there's something like this. Okay. Uh, yeah. So something which may be executed even before we have the initializer block code being executed is here. You might say, okay, let me have the initial value of maybe I want it to be one. So by default, I initially want it to be one and one. So you have given an assignment statement at the time of declaring the instance variables. Right? So instance variables are declared with an assignment. If this is done, okay, fine. If this is what you are writing, okay. Uh, I should put a code which is about how the constructor will now be created. Okay, because all such things will go in a constructor. So this is effectively, so if you are writing like this, right, you may be writing in this manner, right? What is it that we have done? Assignment for the instance variables. Then we have done a, okay, uh, uh, we are looking at what is concerning the object creation. We have done a initializer block. And then we have a constructor like this. Uh, yeah, let's say this constructor. Right? Okay, so this is effectively like saying, okay, this is like saying this dot length equals one and 
the start width equals one and then it is saying count plus plus see these two are the assignments which you have done to the initialize uh, to the instance variables so those assignments are the first statement in your constructor then it is looking at whatever is the code in the initializer block and then is your constructor and then whatever uh, you have written in the constructor so these three okay uh, let me comment them out okay and they are picked up from the other places but the constructor is basically modified like this okay then it goes to the second constructor oh it one this one is saying this so i don't need to do anything because anyway that's happening right and if you want to test it out okay that this is how it's happening okay you want to understand the whole flow let's put system or print in all over the place okay so yeah what's the first thing happening class loading takes place okay right so just to know that yes this is from the static block right so that should be only <coughs> once not each time the object is created and before any object gets created okay fine so class variable one more thing because class is loaded only once there's only one object of the class for the rectangle class to come. okay and therefore the, your class variables have a single copy okay you may have zero objects you may have 10 objects but your class variable this is single copy right okay next okay let's do it in the initializer block okay we may just check the value of the length and let me just say okay uh, okay it's like a prompt you can say so from the initializer block yes we are printing this right so initially this is before we are making the okay so as soon as it has entered the initializer block right so our mm -hmm. assumption is yes it's going to have 